Europe and Asia for years. You look back at the Ukraine. The Ukraine actually means, by definition, it means borderland. It's between Europe and Asia. There's a crucial part there. It's the full valley. You have to know all the details of the geography, the, the economics, the people there, how it's been divided over years. Um, World War I, how they split sides between the Triple Entente and the Central Powers. This is not a knee reflex reaction, but the problem is our American policy has weakened us. We have weakened because we've not had a gasoline refinery since 1973. We've not drilled an on war. We've not made ourselves energy uh, sufficient. We must be, I believe the word is meek. Our, our military must be meek, which is strength under control, must be quietly powerful. Senator Taft, Reagan, their foreign policy were phenomenal because they ran back to John Quincy Adams, Thomas Jefferson. So we've got to look at the details of this. But non-interventionalism, sir, does not mean weak. It means strength. And we have well, to look at American uh, individual liberty. Man, I just feel like I've I may just entered the ring with Muhammad Ali, and I feel a little punch drunk here on this. I don't <laughs> think I've ever heard anybody say anything about Taft's military prowess. <laughs> <laughs> Let's yeah, pretend deep. we don't know about Taft. Yeah, for the, for the uninformed. For the uninformed. You know, well, let's. Okay, the, other, the thing about it is we're preparing, I'm preparing for a job to be ambassador from the sovereign states of, of, of North Carolina to, the, to hold a more perfect union, right? The job of the Senate actually until August 6th of 1787, mm. all foreign policy all foreign policy was in the Senate and the Senate alone, just like the Irish Confederation. It was Madison mm-hmm. who wanted Obviously. the executive mm-hmm. order just to be the mouthpiece, right? Right. So right. That's we were why just going to say that. That we studied this. Mm-hmm. Taft was beautiful, Mr. Republican, right? He probably wouldn't president if he didn't pass away, maybe even before Eisenhower. His book on foreign policy talked about having a phenomenal mm-hmm. Air Force, strength, examples. He did not want to retire from the world. He wanted to be part of it. He wanted to be engaged in it. But we must do it peace through strength. And that's why understanding the geography, the language, understanding the peninsula itself, how it's there. Look at Gazprom. 60% of the gas pipeline goes through Ukraine to Europe. What if we were selling gas to Europe? What if we had the free market compete again? I believe America. We are the, the superpower of free markets when we let our chains be un, off our hands, off our feet. That is what we need strength. I was thinking, sir, about something really clear here. What if our dollar was constitutional and backed by gold, which is Article 1, Section 10? What if we did that? Other countries would never run away from our currency. They would run towards our currency. There's so much intertwined here that we must look back and think about. Are you, like, on cocaine or something? Because you're just, like, speeding through all this focused. stuff. Like You're very yeah. focused. Not kids. Not that cocaine focuses you. <laughs> it's very bad. <laughs> <laughs> How many cups of coffee have you had today? Well, even though I'm not Mormon, I drink, I don't drink coffee, sir. I think if I took coffee, my wife would go crazy. <laughs> I, I, I think she, you, she's a very wise woman. Um, um, this is why, if you're just joining us, this is why uh, Greg Brannon, um, Pat had a you know a frolic yeah. on the sand with him, uh, at least is in, in his my mind. mind during that interview. It was it was, just, was was seriously the last the first one we did with you. I really believe was the best initial interview we've ever had from any candidate. And I believe ever. this may be the second best interview <laughs> yeah. of yeah. any candidate that Great. we've had. This is why Rand Paul has endorsed, Mike Lee has endorsed, um, Freedom Works has endorsed. Uh, all right. Uh, but I'm going to go. I'm, I'm going to go dark on you here, Greg. I'm going Wired. dark. Mm-hmm. If the best interview we've had from any candidate we've ever we've ever been with, and then we hang up the phone and we find out later in the day that you were outside of a courtroom where you were being sued and we didn't know anything about it and you didn't bring it up and we thought it was a little disingenuous. Can you tell us? Can you tell yeah. us what happened? In the courtroom, and because you lost, what can you tell us this story? Well, the system of we have our founders put together is phenomenal. At the end of the day, I believe we'll be vindicated. I'm on boards of pregnancy crisis centers, on companies, on school boards because of my integrity. I've been an OBGYN in private practice for almost 22 years. My integrity has built the practice of 25,000 patients, 9,000 deliveries. There is so much more detail coming out. When our system, which our founders, I'm so honored I'm in this country, when it all comes out, You'll see exactly why. I will never sell my integrity, sir, not even for a Senate seat, never. So when I go speak anywhere, I'll talk about this all day. When the process gets through, I cannot wait to like, tell everything. But the bottom line is this. I do not lie. This was a phenomenal opportunity company. 
And when it all comes out, I'll be honored to come back and go through every detail. Okay. We're, we're I will tell you that I will tell you this that we have because when I found out when I found out that you were in court, and I'm like, what the heck? what? First of all, why didn't my staff know about this? And then you know, why didn't we talk about it? And um, believe me, we turned over every stone, um, uh, and it is coming back to us uh, looking as though this was an investor that was just, you know, um, pissed off as usually investors become when things mm-hmm. go horribly. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll talk about that, I guess, at some other, um, some other point. Yeah, um, sure. I'll be honored to. Okay. So the North Carolina primary is coming up on May 6th. How are things going? Wow. We're the only candidate to beat Miss Senator Hagan uh, uh, five months in a row, either beating her or, le- or tied with her. We are now tied with the Carl Rove McConnell candidate, uh, Speaker of the House. And um, mm-hmm. if you look even at the independence of the primary, we win significantly. That's why we're being attacked, because Mr. Tillis will never debate us. I would love to be on a stage with him. I want to know how he allowed Common Core in our state, how he was actually getting state exchanges done. He said Obamacare is a good idea, we just can't afford it. If that's conservatism, huh, that's not our party. We're going to stand firm. And, of course, that would be the candidate that Carl Rove backs. Yeah, of yeah. Course. but you know what? Uh, I'll wow. tell you, Greg. Um, last night, um, I think it was The Hill reported something, and it said, hilarious uh, spelling mistake by Glenn Beck um, on something with Freedom Works. And it was a deal I said I was going to Louisville with Matt Bevan, and um, I put the I after the S, I think, instead of before. I lived in Louisville. I know how to spell Louisville, for the love of Pete. I can pronounce Louisville, not Louisville. <laughs> um, and so, I mean, it was just ridiculous. And the, the Hill said, you know, we were tipped off by a GOP uh, fundraiser. And I thought to myself, how appropriate that the GOP is spending their time mm-hmm. po- wanting to point out something that came out from Freedom Works, which I didn't type, by the way. Um, and it was uh, uh, sent out to for a rally for Matt Bevan. They don't have they don't have anything, and all the all the GOP is trying to do is destroy anyone that has a, a constitutional bone in their body. Yes, Glenn, and this is why we're winning. This is why a grassroots we have. I mean, Matt Kibbe is a warrior. Oh, I, yes. I am honored to be in the foxhole with him. I'm having Senator Lee come here next Friday. I'm honored that he's endorsed us. Senator Paul, I mean, it's, you keep talking is, look who's on our side and look mm-hmm. who's on their side. I'm the only candidate being attacked at Hahnemann, and we're kicking their rear end. Well, this, is not, this is not about Greg Brannon or a campaign. This is truly about the future. You said something yesterday. I was driving between the hospital and back to the office in about the 10 o'clock hour, and you talked about writing a diary for the next generation. And I started thinking... The victors write history. What I want us to do, sir, is I want us to make history so we write history. That's what I'm looking at. I could tongue kiss you. Yeah, and I'm not a guy who does no, I'm not a guy who does that. I'm not a guy who does that. It doesn't even sound appealing. Not that to there's me. anything wrong not with it. Not that there's course. anything wrong with you know, that, right, of course. Right. Right. Well, I'm a little mm-hmm. sorry because Glenn you did lie. I still got no sherry berries and I'm a little upset at that. Oh no, we didn't. <laughs> off layer, off air. Oh man. Wow. Did we not do we not do that? Uh, we really right, that I know, that's all there. I know, Glenn. I'll tell you what I know. I'll bet I'm they were gonna, intercepted uh, here's by Carl Rowe. I'm going to St. Croix, but I don't get Sherry's Berries. Here's <laughs> what I'm going to do. I'm going to promise you Sherry's Berries, and then I'm not going to do it. <laughs> well, this promise you I'll come to your TV show, and we'll talk it there live. I would love to do that. <laughs> well, I'd love to have you. I'd love to have you. Anytime, let's uh, let's get that booked. Um, but I'd love to, love to have you. I think you are truly one of the more... Um, well-spoken, well-thought-out, no constitutional um, candidates, I, I believe, and this is no offense to Mike Lee, I love Mike Lee, and he's mm-hmm. brilliant. Um, not exactly electric all the time, and he knows that, but he is brilliant, he is honest, he is a decent man. Same thing with Rand Paul, same thing with Ted Cruz, but I have not um, uh, met the likes of uh, Greg Brandon before. Yeah, it's and, just a shame uh, there's nowhere you can go to help him out if you believed in what he's said during these two interviews that well uh, i got a web page for that it's oh my gosh greg brannon.com forward for slash glenn that's greg brannon uh-huh. forward slash glenn that's with two ends who saw that and coming why do you have to have, know, why, what's you. the forward slash glenn for is that because we because we will we we know what has happened last last time you know this we talked about this court case since that court case 
Our last month has been the, the most volunteers, the most money we've raised. But we need ammunition for our grassroots. We don't care if you have Alaska, Texas, Florida. We have to raise our, our army to go against. We will, we will not outspend the rove machine, but we'll be within one, two to one or three to one. And just those odds again, again, we're going to whoop on this because it's not about Greg. It's about the truth. So I know we do that. We raise this money, and we keep taking the battle to them. Glenn, would you and I, would you and I run towards Lexington Concord or away? We can talk big, but I wonder what kind of man I would be. And I believe right now, if I do not stand up for this, my generation, as I said before, I'm 53, we will pass on a less free America. So this is I, my I, I, I go a step further, and I know you, you know, you, you know, you don't have to comment on this, but um, I believe that if our generation, I'm 50, if we don't stand up and we don't really be truthful, honest, forthright, and um, with um, with the peaceful heart of a peaceful warrior, of a Gandhi, of a Martin Luther King, of Jesus, if we don't approach it this way, we do not pass America on. It dies with our generation. So I, I, uh, I'm I with you. I agree. I agree 1,000%. And and that's should... why it's so exciting, because this is not politics. This is, this is a happy warrior knowing we have, we're in a battle that's really over truth. And that's why I love... What America, the many one. I love our different cultures bonded together with the American culture, which is the rule of law, sovereign borders, a common language. You know, our, our judicial system, which is phenomenal. I love that. Is it worth pledging our life, our fortune, but most importantly, our sacred honor? What, and the answer is heck yes. What, what, can I ask you this question? What, what do you think of? Um, uh, there is um, the reports out today. I'll see if I can find it here. The reports out today um, online about. Uh, about what the real cost of Obamacare is, and I'm just I'm still not hearing any of this. Um, although now we have it, we have it absolutely verified uh, of what this thing is going to cost. Mm-hmm. the The premiums are about to skyrocket. Premiums now are rising. Get this, eight times faster before the years of Obamacare combined. Yes, eight I, times I, faster than yeah. all the years combined. Mm. In, in, uh, in November or October of 2010, I had a Tea Party group, and I wrote an article concerning Obamacare, uh, uh, the health of medicine back then. I talked about the philosophy view of medicine, how the individual is superior versus the collective. I went through Plato, Hippocratics, all that kind of stuff. And I went through the idea of defunding it with Article 1, Section 7. But I went through the Cato numbers. Cato says if you scored Obamacare like Hillary Care, it would be $7 trillion. $7 trillion. Medicaid... They were off by ninefold and Medicare seventeen hundred fold. So we had the numbers there. This is nothing new. We knew this would occur. That's why these I'll say these squishes, so called conservatives that just went along to be along. It's Article One, Section Eight, the same Tea Party group Senator Lee started as. That's what this is about. And then Article Six, to hold each other accountable with our oath and what's pursuant thereof. We do that. True federalism will win, and I'm pumped to be part of this with you. All right, Greg, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Greg Brannon, gregbrannon.com, gregbrannon.com. If, if, if Greg sounds like somebody that you feel you want to support, um, I mean, I have not heard anybody speak like this. I mean, Matt Bevan is really good. I, I mm-hmm. would tell you, count mm-hmm. your blessings, America, because five years ago, up. five years ago, we said, where are the good people? Matt Bevan, you Greg Brannon, here they are. And really, if you don't step up now, it's going to be too late. You've got to step up because here are these brave people who are being taken apart, not by the president, not by that machine yet. They're being taken apart by the Karl Rove machine. You Mm -hmm. were told you're nothing but a shill for the Republican Party. That's what they accused you of. And the Republican Party is trying to take you apart. They're not protecting you from the IRS. They're standing by why it's happening. You want protection? You want the Constitution? Then you go Greg Brannon, you go Matt Bevins, you find somebody like that. But they're there. But it's all going to rely on you doing something about it. If you have money, donate. If you have time, donate. 888-900-3393. 